say it. Yeah. Say it. Come on, man. I want you to say, say it. it. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. What you got? You want me to say it? Yes. yes. Say it. Is, is anyone going to hit me if Don't I say it? Come on, Nick. What you got? All right. Nigger. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Alex. Shout out to the Elite Fleet. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can become a member of the Elite Fleet. And as y'all can see, the sun is about to set. That means it's time for me to cook. And it is going to be a good cook up today. I already drunk a whole thing of water. I got another one sitting over there. I want to forewarn you guys, this is not going to be a short video. All right? So get your Cheetos, your flaming Hot Cheetos, you know, get your onion rings, get your brownie, or if you're a health nut, get your apples, get your pears, whatever it is that you do, embrace yourself because I'm about to cook. I'm already in blackout mode. If you've been subscribed for a while, you know what that means. If you haven't, you're about to know, but that means this video is pretty much already a certified classic before I even start talking. Now I'm only gonna give one disclaimer. This is the only disclaimer I'm gonna give. Black women, I'm about to go in on y'all, and y'all deserve it, all right? If you are a black woman who does not fit the description of what I'm talking about in this video, if it don't apply, let it fly. If you are an elite queen, if it don't apply, let it fly. If you come in my comments triggered by what I'm about to say in this video, I am going to assume it's because this video applies to you. And if this video does apply to you, let me tell you sincerely, face to face, good. I hope you lose sleep over it and I hope it bothers you because if you identify with this thottery in any way, shape or form, then you deserve a good sleepless night, all right? You can make it up tomorrow. I don't give a damn. With that being said, that's the only disclaimer I'm getting. So you take it how you take it. Now, if you're new to the channel and you have not watched my video that I made where I talked about Bronny James and how black men and white women are the most hated couple in America, you should check that video out. Now, you don't have to leave this video to go and check that video out. But after watching this video, you should go back and check that video out. Not only because it's one of the best videos on the channel, but also because a lot of what I'm going to say in this video correlates to things that I said in that video and it'll be a little bit easier to understand had you had watched that video all right so with that being said nick fuentes all right if you don't know who nick fuentes is nick fuentes is a white supremacist who have said such things as he would never be in a relationship or marry a black woman black people are intellectually inferior to white people Right. And also, and this is the quote that he said on Pearl Show, which was the first racist statement, white supremacist statement he made. But I sincerely believe Pearl didn't identify it as a racist white supremacist statement because she's too damn stupid to identify it as a racist or white supremacist statement. By the way, he said, and I quote, well, people think that I'm a white supremacist because I said that white people are becoming a minority in America. And if white people are allowed to become a minority in America, then America will no longer be America. Now, if you're listening to that statement and thinking, what the hell does white people becoming a minority in America have to do with America not being America? Because we still have the Constitution, do we not? All right, this is still supposed to be the land of the free and the home of the brave, is it not? But according to white supremacists like Nick Fuentes, it ain't none of that. This country is supposed to be about white supremacy. And at the end of the day, if the white people are not the majority, if the white people are not the supreme race, then this country is going to cease to be this country and we have to do something about it. And the only way to do something about it is to slow down the growth of the Hispanic population and the black population and to stop interracial couples because interracial couples are going to help make the country more colored. Now, now, if you've been following this channel, I've said several times, there's no reason to really worry about white supremacy anymore because white people are becoming a minority. This is not my opinion. It's a fact. It's funny that a white supremacist like Nick Fuentes sees this coming and is aware of it. Almost every white person I talk to is aware of this. But when a pro-black or anyone black comes on the channel, they're the ones who always want to argue about that. That's not true, Alex. Where did you get that information? National Geographic put out a whole damn book on this almost a decade ago. Look it up. Where they said, this is what America's going to look like by 2050. And it was a little Stephen Curry looking girl. It was a little Patrick Mahomes looking chick on the cover. Basically, the country's going to be full of black people, Hispanic people, and mixed people. It's going to be racially ambiguous and or straight up colored. And white people are going to be the minority. Not only should you not be worrying about white supremacy because of that, but you also shouldn't really be worried about white supremacy because white people aren't even the supreme race in this country no more. They don't hold the economic power. So despite the fact that they're also about to become 
become a minority. Asians have the most economic power in the country, and they've had the most economic power in the country for at least a decade. As a matter of fact, America as a whole owns Asia $3.2 trillion. See, your pro-blacks, they're never going to talk about that because they need y'all to be in fear of white supremacy so they can sell y'all their books and they can have y'all looking up to them as a god and they can keep y'all in a state of rage and a state of oppression and give you an excuse for being a fucking bum in 2023. When the reality is white supremacy is falling and it's the least of the black community's problems and we shouldn't be worried about it because of several things I'm about to mention later in this video. Anyways, I don't think Pearl was smart enough to digest anything I just said or really even understood how that was racist. And I don't think the women who replied to her did either because all they talked about is what she said next, which is when she said, yeah, like, I don't think that that's a white supremacist statement. And I also think that slavery was embellished and not as bad as what everyone thinks it is. That's what triggered everybody. That's what everybody made a response to, right? Now, with black YouTube, it was split about 50-50 with the men. You have people like me, you have people like Jason Black, you have people like O'Shea Du Jackson, okay, MTR eventually, because of pressure from his fans, called out Pearl. But you had half of us calling out Pearl. Then you have people like Anton Daniels, you have people like Angry Man, Tommy Sotomayor, lead attorney. They were on just Pearly Things side. Almost all black YouTube that was female, however, was on Pearly Things neck. Now keep this in mind, because this is going to be important later on, right? They were all, I want you guys to understand, even if they weren't in the relationship sector of YouTube, right? Even if they weren't in the red pill sector of YouTube, they never been interviewed by a red pillar, all right? Don't use no red pill talking points. Never been interviewed by anyone in Mansphere. Don't use no Mansphere talking points. And don't talk about relationships. Every black chick was coming at Pearl. She had gamers coming at her, vloggers coming at her. Everybody was coming at Pearl, right? Now, again, keep that in mind because it's about to become very important. So everyone attacked Pearl for bringing this white supremacist on the show. Most of the women who were attacking Pearl focused on her saying that slavery was embellished. Most of them, just like Pearl, wasn't smart enough to understand that the worst thing Nick Fuentes said is when he said that if America is no longer majority white, then it ceases to be America. Because he was essentially hinting at a genocide, but that went over all the women's heads. Whatever. Not all of them. I'm sure some of them got it, but most of them did. Here's my problem. All these women wanted to cancel Pearl, right? They got mad at half of the black men who didn't want to cancel Pearl. Those black men like, oh, I know Pearl. I'm cool with Pearl. I don't think she's racist. I think the statement was just ignorant, blah, 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 right? But every black woman pretty much attacked Pearl, damn near unanimously, the vast majority of them. Now, what I want to understand is this. How come I have yet to see any black woman make a video on these black women? Now I'm about to go in. How do you go on Fresh and Fit and take a picture with a white supremacist cheesing? Half of these women have black sons. They come from black families. They come from black mothers. How can you take a picture with this white supremacist cheesing? What is there to cheese about? If you think that's bad, check this out. Now, if you didn't pay enough attention to the photo that was the thumbnail or the photo that I just showed, that big ass RuPaul looking black chick, all right, that big ass Transformer looking black chick, that big ass might be a man looking black chick with the fake body was shaking her big old fake funky ass in Nick Fuentes' face. First of all, why the hell do black women have to twerk every goddamn word they go? For everything, you graduate, you shaking your ass. Your kids graduate, you shaking your ass. You at a party, you shaking your ass. You at a funeral, they were shaking the ass on the dude who punched the boy's mom who got shot. She was shaking her ass on his goddamn um cardboard cutout, his fat head. Everywhere y'all go, y'all got the twerk. Why? Put an ice pack on that V-Box and calm it down. But she's sitting there twerking in the face of the white supremacist who can barely even look at her because he doesn't like black women. So he's like, look at this monkey being a monkey. Why would you twerk for somebody who literally said that you're intellectually inferior to him? So you're going to prove his point by shaking your ass on him, not debating him, not having any type of intellectual discord by twerking. But if you thought that that was bad, check this out. Yeah, that's right. That's a black woman sitting on the white supremacist's lap. 
Again, this is a man who says we have to find a way to stop the black population and the Hispanic population from growing so that we don't become a minority in the country. This is a man who said he would never be in a relationship with or marry a black woman. And this is a man who said you're intellectually inferior to white people. And you're gonna sit on his lap with a big ass smile like you don't see the problem. Now, if you think that's bad, read the quote. Don't worry, I know you didn't have enough time to read the quote, but I'm about to read the quote for you. So it's all good, all right? Cause I'm about to read it for you. She said, and I quote, I'm sexy, so he's nervous. Hashtag Nick Fuentes, the most banned man on the internet. Please don't cancel me. Thank you, Fresh and Pit, for having me on last night. Now, I want you guys to understand something. That photo I just showed, she deleted from her Instagram. Why? Because black men, kings, salute to my kings, was in her comment section letting her ass up. Why are you sitting on the lap of a white supremacist? Why are you even talking to this white supremacist? Why are you shouting out a white supremacist? Now she's gonna go online and say, she didn't know he was a white supremacist. I told you guys, denying the fleck is women's defense. So she's gonna deny, right? <laughs> she, I didn't know he was a white supremacist. How would I know he was a white supremacist? I didn't know that. Let me read y'all caption one more time. She said, I'm so sexy, so he's nervous. First of all, who the hell told her that? This is how delusional women are. She thinks this man's nervous and got that look on his face because she's sexy. No, that man's beat red and got that look on his face because it's a... Because it's a nigga on his lap. And he don't like black people. That's why he's got that look on that face. Not because you sexy. It's because he's disgusted that he has to pretend to be okay with y'all to do public relations to fix his image that's been ruined. And your dumbass is allowing him to do it. Not only that, but he's probably all red because your big fat ass is sitting on his leg and it's probably messing his blood pressure up. It's probably cutting off his circulation and he can't feel his leg. I can't feel my leg because your big fat ass is on his leg. That's why he's mad. He got a big fat ass black woman who he doesn't like, doesn't respect, sitting on his leg, cutting off his circulation because he's trying to improve his public relations. You have to be a delusional idiot to think it's because you're so sexy. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And then peep this. Now, she supposedly didn't know that Nick Fuentes was a white supremacist, but she also said, and I quote, the most banned man on the internet, please don't cancel me. So if you know that he's the most banned man on the internet, how is it that we're supposed to believe that you don't know why? Let it breathe, run it back. If you're aware that he's the most banned man on the internet, why would we believe that you don't know why he's the most banned man on the internet? And why would you say, please don't cancel me for taking this photo with him if you don't know why? Everybody wants him canceled. You're lying. You know exactly why he wants him canceled. And you're a white supremacist too. Just a white supremacist in blackface. Because she also tweeted this about black men while sitting on a lap of a white supremacist. She said, and I quote, about black men, says who? Initially, you think. However, do black men or kings, y'all love to consider yourselves. You see the disrespect? Now, if Brother Umar Johnson was here, he would be saying, oh, brother, you got to deal with that disrespect because a lot of these black women is hurt because they had to raise these kids by themselves and wasn't no man around helping them raise these kids. Yeah, she's so hurt. She's sitting on the lap of a white supremacist. But I digress. Or kings, y'all like to consider yourself honor thy black women. We initially are queens. We are treated, sexualized, and disregarded as hoes. We're undervalued, depreciated, and constantly disrespected because we too are also black. Means you black men are entitled to black women. LOL, that's the shit I'll never comprehend. Quit the entitlement and evaluate how black men can change the respect culture for black women. All because a black man said to her, black men are for black women. Now mind y'all, all right? When I made my video, when I said, Bronnie James and why white women and black men are most hated couple, my argument in that entire video was, y'all are hating on an 18-year-old high school child 
about taking a white girl to the prom so hard that it was the number one trend on Twitter, it made New York Times, and it made People Magazine. That's how mad black women were that Bronny James took a white woman to the prom. Because Lord forgive me, a black man ever talked to a white woman, right? Now, mind y'all, they weren't really mad that Bronny, a black man, was dealing with a white woman. What they were really mad about is Bronny, a black man of status, was dealing with a white woman. That's what they're going to tell you. Tell you that they're just mad that a black man is dating a white woman. But they're really mad that a black man with status is dating a white woman. Because what is it they always run around and say? White women take all the good black men. Even though I already disproved that wealthy black men majority date white women already factually disproved that in the videos on his channel that's a lie that they run around with but you know the two biggest lies they tell when we get some money we go and date a white girl and the other one is that white women take all the black men now the third lie they'll tell is every time i see a black man with a white woman the white woman is always trash peyton is in shape and she's pretty i look this Peyton. In shape and pretty. Don't tell me that woman is trash, out of shape. Y'all ain't dating fat, ugly, out of shape white women. Now, Peyton's 18, but I know people. I know YouTube. I know the internet. People are going to say, oh, that's pedo. You say she's pretty. I didn't say that I would talk to her. I didn't sexualize her. I said she's pretty and she's insane. But we'll use this. That is the famous viral photo that the New York Knicks took with their wives and all most of the New York Knicks players wives were white. But guess what? The majority of the black women in these comments pecking their fingers right now, y'all don't look better than none of those white women in the photo. And those women are not fat, they're not out of shape, and none of them are low value. Peyton isn't low value. Peyton's family got money just like Bronnie's family's got money. So all black women do is just run around talking shit. They don't do no research. They don't know what they're talking about. Just running their goddamn mouths. But here's what I want to point out, right? Black women got so mad at me putting out that video where I said y'all getting mad at an 18-year-old kid who goes to a high school that has less than 10% population of black people in general, let alone black women, for taking a white girl to prom. Y'all don't know this white girl. This white girl could be an abolitionist mindset. Just in case y'all don't know, when black people were slaves, there were abolitionist white people who helped free us. I want you guys to know that, right? So she could be of that bloodline. She could be all about black people and all about ending white supremacy. Y'all don't know that white girl, but they just willing to come in there and say Bronny James ought to be ashamed of himself because both his parents is black and he knows black love and he should know better than to do this. And this is why black men are weak. This is why black men are the worst. And I can tell you like black men. It was people in the comments saying they could tell I like white women because I didn't see the problem with Bronny James, 18 year old, being in a relationship with a white girl. There were people in the comments saying, I must love white women. I've never been in a relationship with white women my whole entire damn life. I'm the one who is setting up not one, but two different organizations for young black youth in the community. I'm the one who goes to Barbados and host free lacrosse and soccer camps and give those kids cleats and stuff. But I am the one who likes white girls just because I said I don't see the damn problem with Bronny dating someone who's making them happy. Why do black women feel like they're entitled to Bronny because he's black? I have multiple comments saying I must be a white woman worshiper for having that mindset. My s subscribers got called white women worship servers and they could tell that they really want a white woman because why would they be okay with this if that wasn't the case those particular subscribers i know they don't date white women either but this woman just said and i quote she just said and i quote just because you are black doesn't mean you're entitled to black women lol that's the shit i'll never crop in Quit the entitlement and evaluate how black men can change the respect culture for black women. So a black man, right, is not entitled to a black woman. But Bronny is the worst person in the world. I'm a white woman worshiper and my followers are a white women worshiper. Not for telling black men to go and date white women, just for telling black men whoever is treating you like a king and doing what you need them to do, you date them. But she can say that. And do you see any black women saying anything about this? Are any black women coming at them for 
twerking on and hyping up a white supremacist. Nope. Is any black woman coming at her for openly saying you're not entitled for to a black man, black woman, just because you're a black man? Nope. But they came at us. Y'all see the BS? Now, I know why they didn't come at her and they came at us, but we didn't get there yet. Let me keep cooking. Let me keep cooking, because if y'all think that that's the worst of it, it's not. Check this out. Now, that's another one of those fake damn pro-black girls. She on the photo like this. Fight the power. That's one of Umar's queens. All these women are Umar's queens. Because again, remind you, Umar said, you guys got to understand, uh, these black women, you know, if they got a little bit of an attitude, if they got a little bit of an attitude towards black men, you got to be understanding of that because y'all left them with the babies. Lord forbid you leave a woman to take care of a child, a nurturing and caring woman to take care of a child, the one who produces breast milk to be with the child, but I digress. Because of that, apparently, black women have the right to disrespect black men because we have a history that gives them the reason to not like us. Let me ask you this, Umar. Why is it your pro-black queen is kissing a white supremacist? You're going to tell me, right, that you're going to tell black women, which I told black women this too because a black woman came in my comments and was like, well, do you tell black women to go where they're loved and not just to date black men? I ain't never told no one to date anyone based upon race. I think that that's stupid. I tell y'all the traits of elite men and the traits of elite women and where they hang at and how to identify them and to get with who makes you happy and treats you right. I think dating based upon race is retarded. I don't give a damn what nobody says. But I've actually said it in my mouth to black women. Hey, listen. A lot of black men aren't marriage minded. So you might have to go and get you an African. You might have to go and get you a Caribbean. You might have to go and get you a European more. But just know you're not going to be able to take that funky ass attitude to those people. But I tell black women to fix their funky ass attitudes, period. Umar said, I'll tell the black woman to go and date an African. But the African, that I tell them that they can't talk crazy to the Africans like they do black men. Black men say to them, but they shouldn't be talking to us crazy neither. Umar says, well, we got a history of doing them wrong, so they have the right to talk crazy to us. But they ain't talking crazy to this white supremacist. Your pro-black queen just kissed a white supremacist. A woman with a black son just kissed a white supremacist in front of thousands of people. Fresh and Fit is not a small channel. She did this in front of thousands of people. They twerked, sat on the lap of, and kissed a white supremacist. And this Umar brother gonna tell us we need to go back to the hood because of course she's a single mother. Of course the pro-black one is a single mother. We supposed to go back to the hood and pick these damn coons up? The ones who said we're not entitled to them? The ones who kissed the white supremacists, the one that twerked for white supremacists, we supposed to still treat them right because they queens. We supposed to go back to the hood and save them? Get the hell out of here, Umar. This is why I can't stand pro-blacks. Because they don't have the nuts to stand up to women. And shout out to Tariq Nasheed. One of the few people, of course, only black men are talking about this. The black women ain't even talking about this. They acting like they didn't see this. We about to get into that shortly. But shout out to Tariq Nasheed for addressing these damn mammies and coons. But even he tried to give the black women a pass. Oh, well, a lot of them are tethers. A lot of them aren't from foundationally black. They're from other countries. I don't give a damn where they're from. As black people, we should be on coal. This man's a white supremacist. We shouldn't be messing with him. We shouldn't be talking to him. And if a black woman decides to certify a white supremacist, it's just supposed to be black women who correct these women. But black women ain't saying shit. Nothing. They acting like they didn't see this. Now here's my thing. Just pearly things is connected to the same stratosphere fresh and fit are connected to. It's no way in hell you notice that just pearly things did an interview with Nick Fuentes, but you didn't notice that Fresh and Fit did when they have a bigger platform that gets more followers and they're both connected. And it went viral on Twitter. And she got ran off of Instagram. So these black women are aware that these women went over there cooning. They don't care. Now, I know why, and I'm about to get back to that in another video. But this, I want to say really quick, is why I tell you guys all the time, I don't trust pro-black black black women because most pro-black black black women are not pro-black. They're pro-black women. She's sitting here throwing up this fist. This is a single mother. I told you guys 
most women who become pro-black have some type of a fatal flaw. Usually they grew up around all white people, used to date white men, couldn't keep a white man. I had someone tell me, I can get a white man whenever I want to. We can get white men whenever we want to. Statistics say that that's a lie. You can't get white men whenever you want to. White men don't take black women serious as marriage prospects. Shit, not even 10% of y'all can get married out of y'all race. Stop the cap. Stop the cap. And then they like to try to switch it up and be like, oh, well, we just don't date outside our race because we love black men, which is a lie. The woman and that who is sitting on the white supremacist's lap just proved that's a lie because she straight up said you're not entitled to a black woman because you're black. The reality is y'all would love to go out and date these white men. Just like this pro-black queen, single mother, kissing this white man. She would love to have a white man. She can't get no damn white man. Because her attitude stinks and they don't like you like that. They like you to play with you. So well, I get white men whenever I want. Yeah, to sleep with you, not to wife you, marry you, share his wealth with you. You a goddamn lie. I can go outside and see that that's a lie. I can check the statistics and see that that's a lie. But as I mentioned earlier, women live in the losing the la la land. I had a woman tell me one time, it's not about getting men with money. We can get men with money whenever we want to. It's about the fact that when you get a man with money, he don't treat you right. That's a lie. Y'all baby daddies be broke as hell. Y'all ain't got no six-figure baby daddies. Y'all can't get a man with money whenever you want to. What you wanted to say was you can get a man with money to smash you, but to keep him, share your wealth with him, give you his last name, stop the cat. You can't do it. So again, most of these pro-black black women have a fatal flaw. Grew up in the suburbs, tried to get with white boys. The white boys wasn't rocking with them like that, was dogging them out, calling them N-words, race playing with them. So then they decided to become pro-black. Why? because they have to overcompensate. They don't even really want a black man, they really want a white man, but to overcompensate, they go all fight the power and they put their little dashikis on and wrap their head up like Erica Badu and act like they're all extra pro-black. Or a lot of pro-black women are single mothers. Again, why? Because they know that their market value is down because they had some Ray Ray's kid, so now they want to be pro-black, but look at me, fight the power. I got your back, brother. After the fact. Now, it's not all pro-black women, but it's most. Most of them have a fatal flaw. They're single mothers. They're ex-divestors. They have a fatal flaw because black people with sense know that pro-black is BS. If you're a black and you grew up in the hood or you grew up around black people, we are already been past them hoteps on the corner yelling about Egypt, yelling about how we were the original people, yelling about how we were the original little hat people because they'll get me canceled. And it's changed nothing. And we all know it changes nothing. So we ignore it. But... Single mothers and black women who got rejected by the white community and trying to ingratiate themselves with the black men, but they don't know anything about black culture. It's a safe space for them. They can go over there and be all pro blackity black black. And all the damn hotel's going to do is make you a single mother again because they don't believe in the institute of marriage. But one of Umar's pro black queens is the one who kissed the white supremacists. So we had a black woman twerk for the white supremacists, sit on the white supremacists lap and kiss the white supremacists. Now, all those black women, going back to the other part of the video where I said earlier, I told y'all it's gonna be a long one, but a good one. All the black women on YouTube pretty much, right? Across, not even just in the relationship sector or women who have been involved with the manosphere or red pill. I'm talking about gamers, vloggers, chefs, all type of women, trial hall chicks. All these black women was coming at Pearl. How the hell do they have nothing to say about these black women, Mammy and Kunin, who are known white supremacists? None of them have anything to say. This is what always happens. In my video where I was talking about Bronny James, I said, whenever a black woman is in a white man's face, black women don't say anything. And here's what's crazy. We as black men let it rock too. We don't even say nothing most of the time. Now we say something about this because they straight up cooning. But we don't even say anything. You will never see a black woman trend on New York Times, become the number one trend on Twitter, or get, be, be um, People Magazine just for dating a white man. It won't happen because we don't care. Because we know we can date whoever the hell we want. But black women will make it trend when we date a white woman. But these black women are all in the face of a white supremacist and we can't even get black women to care enough to make a video reeling their sisters back in talking about how messed up this is. But I know why. Why? Because the social contract. 
If you haven't had a chance to watch that video yet, the short version of that, all right, I give more facts and a better breakdown of the actual video, but the short version says, white men have sexual access to black women. In exchange for that sexual access, they'll give them trinkets. What's the trinkets? Well, I already talked about before. Again, I go into this more definite other video, but just a short recap, black women being a double quota because they're a woman and because they're a minority. So they get the double quota, which makes them more qualified for government jobs. Government jobs and contracting is the main way most high value black women make their money, right? And then they get other little benefits like Goldman and Shaq's giving them money, willing to lend them a grant to start small businesses, right? Now, when I said that, an Asian feminist came in there and was like, well, Goldman and Shaq's isn't giving them that money because of any type of social contract. Goldman and Shaq's are giving them that money and not giving it to black men because black women are more trustworthy than black men. And they're more educated and they've been proven to be more trustworthy and they can be trusted more with the money. You're talking about the same black women who've been in control of the community since the 19, late 1960s, 1970s. And we've seen the community literally go down like this, like this, like this, like this, to the point where we're full of a bunch of twerkers and a bunch of hood dudes to the point where by 2050, they're estimating that the black dollar is going to have a net worth of zero. You're talking about those black women. They're the ones who are more responsible. They're the ones who are more trustworthy. They're the ones you should give the money to. No, they're giving it to them because they know on the trajectory that we're going, as long as we continue to be a matriarchal society, black people in America, we're going to continue to do this and they're not going to have to worry about us anymore. They're fighting to keep white supremacy alive and black women are helping them by kissing, twerking for, and being in the face of white supremacists and then not calling out the black women who are doing it. But I digress. The social contract says white men have access to black women as long as they give them trinkets money, boosting positions, grants. Now in exchange for that access to black women that they're supposed to have whenever they want to, hence why this white supremacist can still have black women twerking for him, sitting on his laps and kissing them. He'll never lose his access to those women. Y'all can believe the cap they're gonna write in these comments. White men never lose access to black women. Black women are always there for them when they want them. Not all, but most of them. Anyways, now, black women, in exchange for giving those access, gets those perks, but they can't get that generational wealth. They can't get married to or in a relationship with white men. That's for the white women. So the black white men use the black women for recreational fun, and then what's supposed to happen, is they're supposed to send them back to us black men, and we get the sloppy seconds, and we get the attitude, like Umar says, and black women put on their best face for any man who's not an American black man. African men, Caribbean men, white men, European men, Asian men, anyone who's not an American black man, and we're supposed to just take the slap. But what happened was, and you can check the comments in this video, in that video, if you think I'm capping. Indian men back this up. White men back this up. The only ones who were arguing with it was simp single mother raised men and a couple of black women. But anyways, what ended up happening was everything was coming down on black men. They put crack in our environment to mess us up and have us selling drugs, right? They ostracized us from jobs in favor of the women. Everything was coming down on us. They locking us up. With predatory bills, calling us a super predator. Mind you, Joe Biden helped rock that 94 crime bill, that 90 crime bill, and black women were championing putting him in the office. But I digress. Anyways, everything was stacked against us. We we're supposed to be the lowest value of low value men, and we could still pull any woman we want. White women will still marry us. As a matter of fact, statistically speaking, I explained this further in another video. If a white woman cannot get a white man, her second choice is a black man. Let that breathe, run it back. If a white woman in America cannot get a white man, her second choice is a black man. A white man's second choice is an Asian woman. Black woman is his last choice. The Hispanic woman's second choice is a black man. We're only the last choice of Asian women. That's it. Black women are the last choice of every race that ain't black. We're the only ones who put them first, but they disrespect us all the time. But the social contract says black women, men aren't supposed to have any access to white women. But that never was followed. Even back in the plantation days, white women used to sneak off and get that BBC. 
But to make matters even worse, even though we've been ostracized, blocked from the money, blocked from the wealth, black men off of pure charisma and melanin, and I broke this down in another video too, melanin universally worldwide is naturally masculine. Statistical fact, the blacker you are, the more masculine you're viewed biologically and psychologically in your brain. So black men are almost always default alphas to any woman we come across, irregardless of our financial status or anything else we have going on. So as a result, we still had access to white women. We still had access to Hispanic women. Now the problem is the white women love the BBC. So on top of viewing us automatically as alpha males, we got the BBC, the white women were settling down with us. White women were having our babies. This was a problem for white men. This is a problem. I didn't get them. Give me all the shirt version. I broke this down further in another video. So white men and black women have a problem with black men and white women. Because we weren't even supposed to have access to white women. Yet we're their second choice. And they are our second choice. There's a shit ton of black male and white female relationships. And white men and black women hate that. But black white men... Don't come out and complain about it like black women do. They just put little things in place behind the scenes to mess it all up. Right? But black women come outwardly and complain about it. Shame, insults, guilt. Need to be right, deny and deflect. They come out outright and complain about it because it's not supposed to happen. Because the problem is, if black men leave black women, black women have no one. It's not my opinion. This is a statistical fact. I could bring up numerous different articles to prove this. If black men ever said to hell with y'all, black women have nothing. That's the reality of this situation. Because we're not everybody's last choice. They're everybody's last choice. A lot of that has to do with their attitude that they refuse to fix because black women are beautiful. But everyone sees it coming. So if we leave, they have nothing. That's why they're furious about white women because white women are picking black men off at too high of a ratio. And white men are furious about it because we're not even supposed to have access to white women. And every white woman who has a black baby, because nine out of 10 times of a black man shoots up the club of a white woman, that baby's gonna be black. That's gonna further them becoming a minority, which goes back to what I talked about at the beginning of the video. Whoo, let Alex cook. I know what I'm talking about. So because they don't want to become a minority in this country, they hate to see their women with us because they know nine out of ten times when a white woman has a black man's kid, the kid's going to be black. They don't want any more minorities in this country. They don't want to become a minority. They want to stay the majority, and the only way they can do that is by reinforcing white supremacy. But white women have already turned their back on white supremacy. They turned their back on it first by still talking to black men marrying black men and having black men's kids, but they turned it back on it twice when they started pushing feminism. From first wave all the way into second wave, third wave and fourth wave. All that is dismantling traditional white supremacy and patriarchy. That's why you see so many red pill white channels and MGTOW white channels. Cause they don't know what to do about their own damn woman. Hence why I say all the time being pro black is a waste of time. Cause white men Worried about the money they owe Asian people, trying to catch up with Asian people and compete with them in the economic market, and controlling the feminism of their own damn woman, and trying to get them to stop sleeping with us so they can stay a majority in this country. They ain't worried about your ass. Not enough for you to be focused on it. What black people need to be focused on is why the hell are women are twerking for a white supremacist? Why we got men punching women in the face in the middle of a sandwich shop? And a 14-year-old got to shoot him because she ain't got no damn man. Why our network is estimated to be zero by 2050. Why we don't believe in marriage anymore. Why we won't practice elitism like every other culture in America does and start moving to the suburbs and putting our biggest and brightest and smartest together instead of asking our biggest and brightest and smartest of both male and women to come back and help the hood dudes and the hood rats. That's what we need to be worried about, but we can't focus on that because these fake ass pro-blacks keep talking about white supremacy. Let me cook, man. And that's the real reason none of these black women are talking about this situation. Because at the end of the day, their real problem was never with Pearl. 
Their world problem was never with Pearl. Black women's problem in that whole situation was Pearl was a white woman who was getting support from black men, bringing black men on her platform, and her ex was a black man. They're mad because a wealthy white woman is getting supported by black men, bringing black men on her show, and dating black men. And the only time she really brought black women around was to make a fool out of them, basically talk about how they're wild and out of control and why no one wants to date them. That's what they were mad about. They weren't being pro-black when they were going at just pearly things. Not, not all of them, of course, but most. They were going at just pearly things because they were jealous of her ass. And I hate to say that. I was defending them at first. When Tommy Sotomayor and them were saying that the black women were jealous of her, I was like, no, they're not. She's a racist. But considering they have yet to say anything about these women being all in the face of this white supremacist, it makes it seem like Tommy was right and they were just jealous of just pearly things. Because how do you have nothing to say about these women selling us out like this? They have nothing to say. Nothing. And that's what the situation was really about. They just wanted to take down Pearl. They didn't give a damn about being pro-black. It was fake. I told y'all they pro-black woman. So because Pearl was doing stuff predominantly for black men over black women, they're like, Pearl got to get the hell out of here. And Pearl so damn goofy, sis slipped up a Larry when no, she was a white supremacist. So it gave them a reason to get her out of there. And I don't have a problem with them getting her out of there. Because like I said at the beginning of the video, Pearl should have never been talking about black issues any goddamn way. If Pearl was going to talk, she should be like Richard Cooper. She should be like Better Bachelor and just talk about white people problems. If you want to talk about black problem every now and then when it comes up, that's fine. But that should not be the core of your audience or your talking points. But it was. But it was. But the problem is, just pearly things making a racist ass comment ain't no worse than these women solidifying, backing, and acting as if this white supremacist ain't as bad as he is. When he is, he's the one who started all this crap. So if you really were pro-black, you'd be more mad at these black women for backing the white supremacist than you were at Pearl, because Pearl's not black. So if Pearl did believe in any type of white supremacist talking points, she's not black. I'm not saying that makes it right, but I'm saying it makes it make more sense. What sense does it make for these black women to be backing up a white supremacist? None. You should have the same level of vitriol, but they don't. They don't even care. They're not even talking about it. And they're not talking about it because the social contract. They don't have a problem with seeing black women with white men. They only have a problem with seeing black men with white women. They don't have a problem with the passport sisters. They only have a problem with the passport bros. Because the passport sisters are stupid as hell. I can't wait to make a video about that. But they only have a problem with the passport bros. Why? Because of social contract. Black men are the only ones left in the world that black women can dump on. They're below everyone else. We can't do anything better than them. Because if we did, they'd be at the absolute bottom of the totem pole and they don't want to be. It's like they run around and pretend, oh, black women make way more money than black men. Black women ain't never ever average made more money than black men. They still haven't. But they go around calling us broke and dusty and talking about how successful and smart and, and brigaded they are. The fact that the Asian woman backed that BS up should tell y'all that it's a system that empowers black women over black men. That's why the Asian went here. But please believe. Don't get it twisted. And please believe. Once black men are out of the picture, and you as a black woman try to go at a white woman or an Asian woman or an Indian woman or a Hispanic woman, that Asian woman gonna turn on your ass because they don't really like you neither. But they like to use you as a pawn to attack us. Just like they're using you as a pawn to legitimize Nick Fuentes. White supremacy always uses black women as a pawn because y'all refuse to follow us, y'all refuse to listen to us, and then they always run. Umar said the same thing. Well, ain't y'all supposed to be the leaders of the community? How can we be the leaders of the community when the women ain't listening to us? Yes, my women listen to me, but that's only my women. Black men as a whole can't tell black women nothing. They don't listen. And as a result of that, they run off a of pure emotion and the white people and, and the feminists and all them gas black women's heads up to push whatever agenda they want to push at the time. Why you think they got brought to do more for LGBTQ and women's rights than black people? 
because they charge the black women up to believe, oh, this is gonna help all of us, when it really only helped them. And they're doing the same thing to get black women to help get us out the paint, and once we're out the paint, y'all dumbasses is next. Y'all next. So that's the reason none of the black women are saying anything. Because most of them were never really pro-black. They didn't even give a damn about the race aspect. They just didn't like Pearl, were jealous of Pearl, and wanted Pearl ass out the paint. Otherwise, they would be on these black women for cooning for Nick Fuentes. But they're not because they don't give a damn about Nick Fuentes. They don't even realize that he's a white supremacist. They just wanted Pearl gone. That's all they cared about. So now it's my charge and Tariq Nasheed's charge and other black men's charge to try to get these black women in line. But good luck, because these black women, as shown in that tweet, don't even like us. So the likelihood they're going to listen to us, slim to none. And then when they go out and do goofy shit, people are going to say, well, you're supposed to be the leader, so it's your fault. When they don't listen to us. But that's the 360 that we're stuck in. And like I said, that's the reason that black men and white women are the most hated couple. Now go check that video out because I give way more detail. This video wasn't about that. Whoo! All right, I think I finally covered just about everything. We're clocking in at about, what is that, 45 minutes here? That's enough time. All right? I am Alex, and I am out. Peace.